Hey guys, this is Dave with Gazadio, and you know me, I love this hobby. I love portable audio and all of the innovation and forward movement. It seems like there are these small, incremental, yet steady advancements taking place all the time that are constantly pushing the hobby forward. But sometimes I wonder if we just need to slow down or pause or maybe even take a step back. I've never reviewed anything like this, and this is a first not just for me, but for the Gazadio channel. This is probably one of the coolest devices I've ever reviewed, not only because of what it represents as far as the origins of our hobby, but also just the pure nostalgia and all of the memories this brought back for me personally. And I still have tapes, some of which I haven't heard in years. It was literally like stepping back in time. So needless to say, this has been just a, a super cool experience for me. And I wanna try to set this review up a little bit. I will be doing a sound review of sorts because I know that's why most of you are watching. However, it's at the risk of stating the obvious, the goal of this device is not necessarily to deliver amazing sound performance. Its aim or objective is to deliver an experience, to deliver nostalgia, because this is obviously older technology and even though it incorporates some newer stuff, its sound performance is still limited by the cassette tapes themselves and by the signal transfer process. But we will come back to that in a few minutes. Let's quickly take a look at the contents of the package and then we'll go over the specifications and features and again, then we'll come back to the sound. So you can order it with or with without a case. I got the case and I'm glad I did because I like that added level of protection when I go out. But that is something that you have to choose at checkout. I think it adds 10 bucks to the cost. So instead of 139, and that's for this one, the black and white one. So instead of 139, it's 149. They also include a USB type A to type C charging cable, and then a screen protector, which I've already applied mine. Now, as far as the price, specifications and design. The CP13 comes in at 139 for the black and white version and 129 for the light blue version. And no matter which one you add the case to, the price is $149. So basically the case only cost you 10 bucks extra with the black and white version. And then the case is 20 bucks extra with the light blue version. I'm not sure what they did that, but either way it's worth the extra cost in my opinion. The body is made entirely of aluminum alloy and you'd think it might be a little more lightweight, but it definitely does have some weight to it. That being said, at the same time, it also does feel nice and robust. So I do like that aspect of it as well. Now on the outside, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone output, a type C charging port, a large volume knob, and then we have our play, fast forward, rewind, and stop buttons. And these buttons are pretty big and they just feel awesome. They have that very old school mechanical heavy click and that very tactile feel to them. Just like what I remember from the older players back in the day. And it just sounds cool when you press them. Not that they feel cheap or clunky necessarily, it just feels like you would expect it to feel if you were looking for that complete nostalgic experience. And then to open the cassette door, there's a small groove on the edge of the door. You can just catch your finger on or your fingernail on, and then you just pull it open. You slide the cassette in, push it closed, and you're good to go. And then you also have a clear window so you can see the movement of the supply and take up reels, which is pretty cool. So as far as features go, this is kind of minimal compared to some of the other additions you may have seen on some of the more feature rich 
portable cassette players back in the day because some had Dolby noise reduction, some also had EQs, built-in AM FM tuners. So this is just gonna give you the basic functions, which was totally fine for me. But what about the inside? Well, this is where things kind of get cool because not only does this have a built-in rechargeable battery that provides about 13 hours of playback time, they've also used some pretty nice internal components, of course, with the goal being to preserve as much of that analog sound experience as possible. And some of those components include the classic JRC5532 and the LTA8092, which the 8092 is on the tape head side. And they both seem to work very nicely with this type of application. And apparently that combination ensures a signal to noise ratio of 55 dBs. Yes, I did say 55 dBs. It also uses a pure copper super large flywheel, which helps with the stability of the tape movement. Now, one thing I should point out is that the CP13 uses fully analog circuit processing with the goal again of trying to achieve that pure analog experience, which I feel like they really did accomplish. Okay, let's move on to the sound. Now I quickly want to attempt to dispel the myth that all cassettes sound terrible. They don't. As a matter of fact, it's not impossible to get pretty decent, not great, but decent sound from a cassette tape, especially with the right audio equipment. It's still not going to be near the levels of some of the newer technologies, but it can still be very enjoyable. They have some great older, Sony single, like the home style, so like for your home audio system, Sony single cassette well players with three heads. And if you use the metal tape, you'd be surprised at how good it can actually sound. Now, obviously the CP13 isn't going to be necessarily at that level. However, I was really surprised at how good it actually was. So let's talk about that. And this segment will be a little shorter than usual for obvious reasons. But anyway, thankfully, I was able to get my hands on some pretty decent quality tapes, which was awesome because at first I was a little worried I wasn't gonna be able to find anything with high enough quality to really see what this was capable of. And also I should reiterate and start off by stating that the reality of this format is that it's going to have its limitations and you obviously aren't going to experience the best that audio has to offer because not only is the cassette medium itself limited as far as its dynamic range, but also the technology is limited as well. For example, apparently there is some attenuation in the sub bass frequencies and also in the upper treble above 10K. So you're not going to necessarily have the extension on the bottom or the top end that other digital formats might provide, which means you're potentially going to be missing some of that sub bass rumble from the low end, and I was, I definitely noticed that. And also on the top end, I was missing some of those, again, upper treble harmonics, the air, the sparkle. So the presentation is going to sound a little soft or rolled off, so to speak, but that also affects other stuff. It affected treble detail, micro detail, and it's really something that you can't help but notice at least a little bit, especially when you're comparing it side by side with newer, digital players using the newer audio formats. And on top of that, you're also contending with tape hiss, floor noise, plus over time, the tape heads start to accumulate grime and they get buildup, which further can impact the sound quality. Point being, I didn't go into this expecting ultra high-end audio. I was fully aware as I'm sure most of you are, that this technology has some limitations. All that said, I still feel like I was able to experience a pure analog presentation. So while it may not have 
given me the highest level of dynamic range, detail, or high levels of technical performance. It still gave me a very natural, full-bodied sound. It still had some detail, and it still delivered fairly acceptable levels of technical performance, even though, again, that's not what its purpose is. But the thing is, for me, it was more than that. It went beyond that, and it was kind of unexpected. It was probably the most fun I've had in this hobby in a very long time. And to be honest, just being vulnerable and real with you, there were even some emotional moments because I found some audio tapes of my dad, some old recordings of the choir I used to be in, and some other personal family tapes. But even just listening to music was enjoyable. And again, it's portable, which is really, really cool. I took it on lots of walks. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna be taking this on a very long trip here in a couple of days. So, so that aspect of it's really cool as well. Bottom line though, it 100% took me back to my first experiences with portable audio, which is exactly what I was hoping for. And for that reason alone, this gets my recommendation, but it's not just a cheap portable cassette player. It's a very well-built and for what it is, a good sounding cassette player. And I haven't even touched on the design yet. It has a really cool kind of retro design to it. I, I really love it. Bottom line, this is a very cool device. Well done, Theo. So that concludes my review of the Theo CP13. If you're new to the Gazadio channel and you like our videos, please take a minute and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further with your support, we also now have a Patreon. I'll make sure and leave a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. Please like this video. Please share this video. I hope you have an awesome day.